Welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. Uh, today, I have Captain Mark Williams with me from Silver Addiction Charters. Uh, we're going to cover a couple topics that were kind of questions brought up. Um, we did that series on the Captain's Roundtable called uh, Knowing Where to Fish. And uh, people had some specific questions about how if I didn't have a network, if I didn't have um, a lot of information, where would I gather information and, and and then where would I decide to fish? And I think that um, this series, we're going to talk about uh, a bunch of the different talking points that would work towards figuring out where to go. So if I'm fishing a port I've never been to before, we're going to break that down. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, building a network or how to um, assemble some sort of a network. Uh, also, we'll talk about... Um, you know, uh, internet sites that we I would go visit to try and gather some information, um, weather patterns that I would pay attention to, and then um, kind of breaking it down as once you start fishing, what would you change if it's not working? Yeah, the audible method. Yeah. So I think um, these topics will help everyone improve their, their catch, and uh, hopefully you'll understand... Um, the importance of of that network and how it plays in it, you're going to a, a, a new port or somewhere that you haven't fished and what are we looking for what are we breaking down what are we paying attention to leading up to that trip um salmon fishing is um a lot of patterns i think that um you know wind in the direction of the wind and the strength of the wind um is something that's very important to look at in the port that you're going to fish. Um, the wind can actually be blowing in different directions 20 miles apart from each other. So that's an important thing. Um, that What that will tell you is probably a lot of uh, where the water temperature is going to be stacked up. For sure. When we were, when I was fishing the club tournaments and I was living on the west side or from the east side of the state, I always looked out at least a week in advance. So if I was going fishing this coming weekend, I started watching the weather patterns to see what was happening. Like you just said, how hard is the wind blowing? Where's that pushing that temperature? Check your weather buoys, you know, that are online. That is such a useful tool. I mean, we use it out here all the time because we're fortunate to have one out here in 90 foot of water. And take a look at that temp and look at it. Even look at the mid lake see where that water is moving because we've all showed up at a port and all of a sudden you know it's ice cold water and you need to be able to take a look and see what are you going to do with if that happens especially in the springtime well and you need to um you need to understand why the water is ice cold and definitely how it became ice cold so if you had east wind mm -hmm. Um, in the spring, especially your warmest waters next to shore, when you get an east wind on the west side uh, uh, of Michigan, which is actually on the east side of Lake Michigan, so you're you're having an offshore wind, um, you're going to blow the surface water, which is the warmest water, will go to the outside, and the and the water will return from underneath. Um, so you'll have cold water near shore. Uh, it, you know, springtime is a little bit different because it the water is all the same temperature you don't have that thermal climb you don't have um you know cold warm water stacked on top of cold water necessarily it's more that you have warm water pressed into shore or cold water next to shore and so i think that's you have to understand through the process of the lake warming up, how it is affected differently. And it's not going to be the same in August as it is in May or June. Well, and I think that even goes to say what you just said with spring. Let's break spring down. First ice out, spring's here. You know, like you just said, that warmest water is closest to shore. One of the things that I look at, because I usually didn't get to fish the, the Lake Michigan during that time, was in May and watching it springtime when these thunderstorms roll through, when you get this these disturbances that come through. Maybe it's a quick blow. Maybe it was just a quick front that came through. But move that water and move it quickly as it's warming up through the uh, season. Well, in the warmest water... So anytime you're fishing um, a port on Lake Michigan, it's normally a river mouth port. They're almost all are. So you have water flowing out of the river and into Lake Michigan. <clears throat> that water is going to be, uh, you know, have a lot of organic matter in it. It's going to be a lot of nutrients in that water. It's generally going to be warmer mm -hmm. than the water in, in Lake Michigan. So, and it, it'll be colored. Yep. And I, 
I think that colored water or water that has, um, we're not talking chocolate milk, but we're talking like iced tea, stained water, that it warms faster than clear water. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think the sun affects the particles and it warms the water up. So if the wind is blowing south, and even if it's a light south wind, I'm going to fish river mouse, I'm going to fish creeks that come out into Lake Michigan, and I'm going to probably fish them from the south side and then focus north because I want to fish where that water is running up against the shoreline, and that'll be the warmest water. So if I'm fishing uh, Point Sobble, uh, right before you get to Big Point Sobble, just south of there in Ludington, there is um, the Sobble River comes out. And that river, if the wind's coming out of the south, I want to fish from the right at the Sobel River and north because I want to stay in that stained water. And you're looking for water that's stained, very similar to walleye. When you're, mm-hmm. when you're fishing walleye, you don't want to be in gin clear water. Different reasoning, but um, the temperature of that stained water is generally warmer. The temperature of water running out of uh, inland lake or running out of um, you know a creek system is generally warmer. And we're just talking a couple degrees. Yeah, so we're not it's not a big difference. Much, it's, yeah. not, it's definitely not a big difference. And you also, when you're looking at that, like you said, you're going to fish that from south to north. You're also fishing with the current. The fish sits with its nose into the current. And therefore, as you're fishing that same line, you're fishing that current as well. And you know what? That could cause issues on the surface as we've seen with storms and stuff as it gets through the season, it sets up those currents on the surface even. And you run offshore and I run offshore and we've all seen the foam when they've been turning and you know slow the boat down, but we're not talking necessarily all the time of them being that strong. They can be just subtle currents you know, sure. from just the, you know, the uh, flow coming out and then just a subtle movement. You still want to fish that. And you know, being able to understand currents is, is a whole other topic that, I mean, we could talk about for hours and hours um you know in the southern basin of lake michigan there's not a lot of current Mm -hmm. in lake erie there's not a a ton of current you know when you get to uh little point sobble big point sobble point betsy uh, uh, you know you have these points and in these um contours that are the you know the current is flowing against these contours and you you have massive currents i mean it can be miles of mile an hour currents uh multiple mile an hour currents that are not uncommon so generally when you fish a current you're going to fish with the current or into the current and you're very seldom going to fish across the current um you, you know when you're fishing across the current with a big spread like what we run mm-hmm. uh you're only going to have a few rods that are really lining that are working. Yeah. So it, it, you know, keep that in mind, you know, um, oftentimes if you're fishing and you're following a depth contour and you're trying to stay in the same depth of water, you'll catch more fish. Now the reasoning is that the current is running along that depth contour. It's not running up into the depth contour. It's, it's, I mean, at some point it may be, but you're going to be running along that contour. And, And if you're lining it up, um, if you're, if you're both sides of your boat look like they're pulling the same way, you're probably lined up pretty good with the current. I mean, there's, there's time, especially here in Ludington where you're going along, like you said, and you may get out of the depth that you want. And you know what, all of a sudden in order to get back in, you got to go out and you're not going to be as productive, but it's just what you have to do. But I want to go back to what I was talking about with watching that weather, because going right along with what you said, with the flow coming out of these river mouths and the streams and such is, you know, look and see not just where the wind's blowing, but what the volume of water may have come down. Have they been having torrential rains? Have they been getting a lot of warm weather that's causing the melt? to happen with the snow to give those uh, um, rivers and streams the volume of flow that's going to, in essence, give the push, you know, out into the lake. That's important to understand, too. Well, and and if you have wind um, that's blowing across water and then blowing into, let's say, a depth contour, um, this is more near shore, or blowing into the shore where that water is blowing in, that will probably be your warmest water. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a point that sticks out, and then we'll put an animation up. If, if you have a point that sticks out and you have wind blowing across the point, so there's water, land, water. On the backside of that point, it's going to peel off, yep. and it's going to be cold. And um, Dennis talked about this in our, in our Knowing Where to Fish uh, roundtable discussion, that you know that if you hit that cold water right at a point and the wind was blowing to the north, 
you're if you keep going, it will start warming back up sooner or later. <laughs> it's only going to peel off where that contour allows it to peel off. And um, so that's, you know, these are just little things. But well, well, I think that's a great point you just made right there because you and I fish very similar but different in where we like to start. You love to go out, sit down in the double zeros um, in short of the, the point and start fishing. And I'm one that wants to get out in front and get away from people and, and stay there. So I'll usually sit either at the point or just north of the point. And we have the conversation all the time because you know I'm out front. You'll say, Mark, I just hit cold water, do I keep coming? I'm like, yeah, it definitely is, you know, better on this other side. Or the thing is, man, it's ice cold over here. No, don't. And then, you know, I, we know to spin back around. So that's important. And that's where your network comes into play yeah. right there. But also knowing that you can go beyond that. Don't stop in the cold water, stop in that north side. Yeah. And I, that's another thing. So say if I've never fished anywhere, uh, so I've, n- I've never fished a port. I don't really have any information. Um, most ports have kind of a, like a flat out in front of them, um, at least the ports up here. Mm-hmm. And um, I, if I'm going to start in 60 foot of water, I'm going to start in 60 foot of water where in less than two miles I can be in deeper water. Yep. I'm not going to start fishing. I, I want to be able to change my depth quickly. If I'm trying to figure it out, if I'm hunting for fish, I'm trying to figure out where these fish are. That's important to me. Um, You know, I want to be able to not be, you know, if there's no fish in 60 foot of water where I'm at, there's a good chance there's no fish in 60 foot of water anywhere around me. So if I got to drive seven miles to get to deeper water trolling, Mm -hmm. you know, you're talking probably three hours before. Now, if I only got to go a mile, or, you know, I'm on the edge of that contour. Well, we're fortunate here because with in Ludington with the shelf, you know, we've got a shelf that actually runs from Little Point all the way up to Manistee. I know in the Captain's Roundtable they mentioned that they run out, you know, to the shelf up there and how that works. So we do have that uh, um, ability to change depth really quick. The big thing that I think that we have to realize is it's also the temperature and where that's at. That's where that's going to help us with our, you know, with our buoy we have here or where we've watched that to where we know, hey, it's going to be cold here because we've had the offshore winds we've had all these things so if you look at those factors going in it's it helps out a lot and talking to the locals that are already there yeah so it's two things i want to touch on with what you just said so i'm so first off i the leading into my trip i'm going to pay attention to the weather um mainly the wind um temperatures as well but but the wind direction is very important um i'm going to try to find any fishing reports that are available for that area i'm going to pay attention to those even if it's not in in the you know exact port but maybe it's only the next port up or something i want to pay attention to that i want to know what kind of fish i'm going to be targeting if there's any baits that have been better i'm going to contact bait shops bait shops are in the business of selling bait and selling baits and and making fishermen successful and drawing fishermen to their port they're going to give you good good information you know do you do you call there and ask for an entire program no i think you get bits and pieces of information everywhere that you can and then you you put that together with what normally works for you and that's how you develop your program um another thing though is water temperatures especially in the spring but it really pertains to the whole year there's two different ways so in august Um, the water temperatures are probably going to be pretty similar everywhere on the surface. So now if you're looking at, um, these buoys, weather buoys, a lot of them have a a thermal measurement tool that'll measure the thermal client at different temperature or different depths. It'll give you the temperatures that gives you at least a good idea. You know, that if the temperature starts to change from 70 to, uh, you know, 48 degrees around 60 foot, that first thing in the morning, you're going to be fishing probably that 60 foot range. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be where your thermal climb is. That's going to be where your most fish hold. Some fishing grass will show that to you. A lot of times if we're fishing and we haven't fished, we'll run out. We'll drop our probe to make sure yep. that the water is, is, is doing something that we think is conducive to, to fish. And that's normally a, a setup thermal climb. 
Um, but so check for weather buoys. You can just search Google search weather buoys Lake Michigan, and they're all going to come up and you can kind of, um, you know, check those out. That'll give you good wave information usually too. Um, also bait shops are going to tell you where yeah. these are charter boats. A lot of charter boats have links to weather buoys right on their sites. Um, the other thing for temperature is satellite imaging. There's a thing called coast watch. It's hundred percent free. It's not always 100% accurate or up to date or up to date. <laughs> you need to make sure that the, the picture that you're looking at is uh, check the date stamp on it. But um, we'll put a link here for that. Um, Coast Watch has temperature on the surface. It has uh, wave directions and it will show your currents and your current. So if you're if the wind is blowing south, the current is probably running south. If the wind is blowing south for four days, the current is probably running north because you think about if you push water into one corner of a bowl or or, or of a square, at at some point, there's so much water in one end, it has to return. And that's generally the way Lake Michigan works and really any large body of water. But that's where you have to watch it ahead of time. Ahead of time. Because no. what you just said right there is things that people miss. They're like, oh, well, the wind was blowing out of the south, so I need to troll this way. No, it blew there for four days, and it blew like a banshee. So all that water stacked up in the southern end of the lake, and now it's going to come back. And, you know, I had a tournament situation where we had a spot, and it blew like that for three days. And we, it was offshore, so we were fairly confident the fish were going to stay there but that had moved them just a little bit to the north. And we sat down, unfortunately, too short. And by the time we got to the fish, you know, our time was up. So yeah. it's important to watch that and, and take, it, take that into consideration. So I think, you know, that's a, at least some good places to gather information pre-trip, mm-hmm. you know, before you fish. So that goes into your planning um, section. Uh, so I think the next thing, let's, I don't want to beat on it, I don't want to beat on it, but um, I want to talk about building a network and having a network. And it's, it is the most important thing. I, I truly think that if you have four or five boats that you're talking to most of the time, it's, you just can't, you can't beat that information. No. And, you know, I see people on uh, fishing forums on Facebook or, you know, there's still some forums that operate just uh, on um just on the internet, but I see guys like, well, hey, I'm going to be fishing out of South Haven on Saturday morning. Is anybody else going to be there? Do you want to share some information? Do you want to talk? I mean, that's a great way to do yep, it. Definitely. It goes both ways. If you want people to give you information, you have to give them information. And it has to, you have to be, I mean, you have to have trust in the people that you're talking to that. And honesty. It, it, yeah, and that they're being honest with you. Number two, if somebody tells you something, if Mark tells me, hey, Adam, you know, we were fishing Little Point yesterday and we were absolutely hammering them. If I go onto a forum and write that, Mark's not going to give me information again. Uh, You know, I mean, you got to be respectful with the information that you're getting. But truly, like, if you don't have, you don't know anyone, you go to a port, you're going to meet some guys at the bait shop. You're going to meet some guys. Or at the bar at the bar, you're going to meet some guys in the parking lot of the launch. Trade trade information, you know? I mean, it's not going to hurt. Well, one thing, and I'm going to go back to what you just said about putting it on a form, that is important. But the other thing that I found is, you know, I, was, I, I don't have a problem with walking up and just asking folks, hey, what about this, especially if it's not a tournament. So if I'm going to a brand new port and we're just traveling, we're going to go fish, you know, I'll walk down the dock and see who's catching fish or what's going on or, or check the, you know, the fish cleaning station and see what's what. But one thing for sure, be courteous when you get that information, mm-hmm. especially if it's from a charter boat. If you get it from them, hey, you know what? And they say, hey, we're, we're fishing here at, let's say, Big Point. We're fishing in 140 foot of water, and here's what's working. They're, they're giving you the information. You can see it's baits that they're running. Don't sit down on top of them. 
I mean, you know, you gave me information, you know, last August and, you know, you, I was fishing a little bit farther to the north and you said, Mark, you know, set up a little bit shorter. I ran out there, set up a little bit shorter. Of course, it's August. We're all short on sleep. You're like, why the heck did you sit down on top of me? But I was in front and I was going to walk away anyways. But don't do that. I mean, I, obviously you and I can have yeah. that relationship, but when it's somebody you just met, be courteous of them and don't sit there and try to crowd them off of a line. Well, and I think that if you set up next to somebody, you know, you're now you're, you're truly have to work together. I mean, you can't, if, if you get too close, neither are you going to catch fish. Right. Um, so there again, you know, when you run out, we use our radar. We never set within a quarter mile of someone. Um, we always want to have at least a quarter mile buffer. If we can have more, great. But Ludington is very crowded and a lot of times, a quarter mile is all you're going to get. Right. You know, if I want to set up in 130 foot of water and I can't, then I'm going to find a spot. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to force it. Yeah. And plan if B. you, if you set up shallow on a, on a drop off, don't expect to be able to just go out. If you set up deep on a drop off, don't expect to just be able to go in. You know, it's not, if there's a hundred boats going north and south, or if there's a hundred boats going northeast and southwest, don't expect that you control a different direction than those other hundred boats. You're just going to cause problems for yourself and everybody else. And you're you're going to catch less fish. They're going to catch less fish. If you're doing that kind of stuff, um, you know people are they're not going to share. That. They're not going to share information with you. You know, I mean, it, it just be courteous to each other and and try and you know. I always say, you know, I, I can, I have a group of guys that we fish and we'll set up right next to each other, all of us, and, but we'll never have a problem because no. we all are doing the same directions and we're, and we're talking and we're communicating to each other before there's an issue. Well, and there's something to be said about right there that people don't pick up on. And I know we're kind of making this maybe Ludington specific, which we know we don't want to, but it's a good thing because we have the shelf out here to look at. And one of the things that, like you just said, the shelf doesn't run north and south. The shelf runs, you know, northeast, you know, southwest in certain points. And one of the things that you got to realize if you come to the new port and you go out there and you've got your information, you got a depth, and all of a sudden you look and you see, okay, they look at the charter boats and they're running a certain heading and i'm just going to use a random number they're heading in a 293 heading they're running a 293 heading for a reason because they've already done the homework to find out where the current's at find out the temperature direction and everything and the depth and they're in that so if they're running a 293 don't set up behind them or beside them and try to run a zero because that's just not going to work you're not going to catch as many fish because they've already figured out that that direction of troll well, and I think, yeah, you know, the being on the right direction, going the right direction is more important than, in my opinion, anything else. Um, I mean, obviously you have to be around fish, but if you're on a 293 and you change it to a 297 and all of a sudden you're catching 30% more fish, I mean, it's that there's that much difference. Like you need to pay attention to direction and speed, direction, well, speed, direction, speed. Well, one, one thing that came to, comes to mind with me, you and I were out there fishing. I happened to set up a little bit deeper and I was on a, literally on a three degree different heading than you were. And you were sitting there, you're like, Mark, you're getting fish. I'm not getting bit back here. I'm right behind you. And it looked like the same heading. And I see, and you asked that question, what's your heading? And you changed those three degrees, just three degrees. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, yep, they're there. And you just start pounding fish. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and I think that has more of a bearing when you have current, when you have strong sure. current, because if you're a little off in the current, it makes a big difference. It makes your presentation look different. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that's enough for, you know, building a network. It's important, you know, it just, it, you'll be more successful if you can um, find a way to interact with other fishermen in a positive manner to get information and to share information with them. So it, it, will, it will make your life a lot easier.